Hello everybody, welcome back to the cabin. Welcome back to Commonwealth. Flipper, I was gonna do my walk up from out there, but it's raining today, so I'm not doing that today. But we are gonna talk about something that everybody's always afraid to talk about. Not everybody, but I hear a lot of folks say stuff like, I'm not an accountant, so check with your accountant, but. So I'm gonna get that out of the way and say that at the beginning, but I really feel that even that is part of a bit of a problem where people are afraid to talk about this stuff to the point where people don't even realize that knowledge is what keeps the IRS from getting more money from folks who are resellers. And let's just face it, most resellers aren't wealthy people and most resellers aren't going to become extravagantly wealthy by reselling. It's just about quality of life and what they really enjoy to do. And it's those people, I think anyways, that should take advantage lawfully of a course of every single thing that you can possibly do to pay less in taxes. There's already fees on all these platforms. There's already built-in expenses into all this stuff where your profit margins are getting pinched little by little every year. And so we're going to talk about those things today and the bigger picture and the smaller picture as well. Let's go take a look. And if you are one of the folks new to this channel, this channel is always about picking things that have sold and showing you what's sold. But we mix in that topic throughout the video. Let me pick something first. I get a lot of people complain like, oh, I'll just get to the point. Well, the point of this is to tell, tell people what sells on eBay, you know, just by simply walking through it. And I learn a lot from y'all as well. There you go. This is appropriate. A wallet. This is an extra wallet. I think I've pronounced that right. And this was like purely an accident pickup. And I'm glad I've now learned about it because we sold both of these. I think I paid five bucks total for them. And this one sold for $55.95 plus shipping. And so did the other one. By the way, on a little bit of a side note here, you know, a lot of people who watch these channels, watch the picking channel, they see these comps on the screen. Everybody out there who's a reseller, you already know this. They see these comps on the screen and they're like, oh, you paid $2.50 for that. It sold for $56. That's crazy. What they don't see is some of what we're going to talk about, which is the expenses that are added into reselling. And every single one of those expenses needs to make itself known on your taxes. And of course, we're past the tax season, but I figured I'd wait this year and talk about this stuff once everybody's past the angst and anxiety. But now's the time really to prepare. And so I wanna talk about that. I want you to chime in down below as well. There's a lot of disagreement about this kind of stuff. So like I said, I'm not an accountant, but I think this stuff is important. And this year in particular, I know for a fact I did the best job I've ever done at keeping track of every single thing that I knew I could write off. I could take off that bottom line where I had to pay taxes on it. So lawfully, of course, and we're going to talk about those things. Let's pick a few more things. I mean, let's face it, you know, a lot of us work pretty darn hard. I know a lot of you work pretty darn hard and a lot of you are kind of casual, but that's the person right here. I think that should pay attention the most to this stuff. Those people out there who are, who have done this forever and have been making a good income, side income, full income, you already know most of this stuff. And I'm sure in the comments, somebody will say something like, well, the government should get more of our money or whatever, fine. We go donate more. But for most of us, we work hard and we want to pay what we're supposed to pay and not a dime more. And this is Butch Reed and Ron Simmons. These are Galoob 1998. They're, you know, kind of the reaction to the LJNs for WCW. And I took an offer on these. I probably could have waited, but I took an offer for $20. Plus shipping. It was a nice little sale, not as nice as it could have been if I would have sold it at full price, but we got $65 for it. It's Chicago Bears, Brian Erlocker, one of the all-time greats for Chicago. That jersey sold $65 bucks plus shipping. So last year at this time, I made a little promise to myself. I'm like, listen, I am going to... I've always kept track of all kinds of stuff, but I'm not meticulous enough about it, in my opinion, and I knew this year would be a, or this last year, so this tax season that I just paid, would be probably one of my best, if not my best, reselling years ever. And, you know, I can talk about some YouTube stuff as well, because having a YouTube business, you start to think of other things a little differently. We're going to stick to reselling on this one. But just to give you a little taste of that, I've even been doing a better job on that part of it. I even asked my account, I'm like, hey, you know, can I write off these t-shirts? I'm like, I would probably have some of these t-shirts, but I wear these t-shirts because of this show. <laughs> and so we get like, well, you know, maybe, maybe not. And it's like, okay. So part of this whole thing is, 
is not just paying as little as you can lawfully, but being in a place where you're comfortable and you don't have any stress like, oh, is an audit going to kill me or whatever? And so I've found that I'm much more comfortable doing everything I know I can possibly do and those borderline things, you know, asking the right people. So I'm not going to get too much into that stuff. I'm looking at these dog treats over here. I'm thinking, man, I don't know. I feed these dog treats in here so they come in a little secret. So they come in here. They know the dog treats are in here. So I can put them on the video. I'm like, can I write those dog treats? <laughs> but look, there's all kinds of stuff that are absolute certainties. And if you're not doing this already, you should be. And if you're not keeping track of this stuff already, you should be. Even if you're brand new to reselling, because I can tell you there's a sob story that all of us resellers have heard many, many times, which is people get into this and at the end of the year, they're stressed out. They're like, oh my gosh, I didn't do this and I didn't do that and I didn't do that. And they end up paying way more than they should be paying. And of course, the biggest one, which we all know about, is mileage, for goodness sake. You know, very, very few people don't go out and source where, where they have things show up to them. So this Scrabble board deluxe edition for a time there, especially during the pandemic, these were going for $55, $60. It's kind of cooled down a little bit. But when I see them out there for five bucks, I pick them up. $40 plus shipping, a bit of a pain to ship, but we can get it done just a little frankenboxing. So just looking at my taxes, I can tell you right now that that is just a massive thing for mileage. And I've always done it in the past, but I, I know I missed a ton and I didn't always do it. So this year I'm like, I'm going to do it. I set two alarms on my phone twice a week, once on Sunday to remind me to track the well, you know, a lot of people do automated ways. I'm kind of old school. So I do it automated sort of ish, but I keep a record and I'll go back and I'll look at Friday and I'll look at Saturday and I make sure I put those things in there. And then, of course, in the middle of the week, I'll put all the stuff. And a lot of this, like I said, is automated for me and everybody's got a different system. So I'm not really advocating for a system or for you to get a tracking app or whatever. I don't care. Whatever it is, Figure out a way that you know you can do it and do it correctly. And I count everything when I go to the post office, if I got to go to UPS, the occasional thrift store, which is very occasional at this point, all the Friday sales I go to, all the Saturday sales I go to, I pretty much don't go on Sunday. Anything, an estate sale, anything to do with business. If I got to go to Walmart to pick up extra boxes for a whatnot or a dib did or something, I make sure all that stuff is on there every single time. And I bet you this year, I don't want to say it's perfect, but if it isn't perfect, it's the most perfect it's ever been for my records. I know that because it's more than it's ever been. I mean, what is it now? 65 and a half cents self-employed for, for mileage. I've been selling cameras like crazy because, you know, I've been listing cameras like crazy. So this one, I probably undersold it a little bit, but I had so many. I'm like, let's just get through this stuff non-tested and all that stuff so some camera person out there is making money on me for sure on this is this one a nikon 60 dollars plus shipping and you know it's partially youtube but it's certainly reselling because i know a lot of resellers do travel to these events and i'm not just talking like we had the reseller rally last year we had all that stuff we did trash to cash events and and boss reseller remix and all that but i'm talking about these highway sales as well i mean peaches to beaches was well over a thousand miles do the math on that one right there and you need to take all of that stuff canon this just got in here i think canon dixia and this is a little camcorder type deal and i just it blows my mind years ago these things were absolutely worthless and now they're coming back into style a little bit but that one sold for what this one sold for 70 bucks Canon Vixia HF R600 video camera with Canon carrying case, $70 plus shipping. And yeah, I realize there's wear and tear on your car and you got to get oil changes. It's not just the gas to get down and back and all that stuff. But, you know, gas didn't cost $650, $700. So there's a little bit padded in to cover those expenses. And you need to be absolutely meticulously looking after that stuff. This just gets me thinking, you know, I should have got some one of those mile tracking apps to, to do an ad on my channel. I did get, well, I'm letting the cat out of the bag. I finally got, I get offers all the time to do ads and I turn like 99% of them down. But there was one the other day, I'm like, sweet, they want me to do an ad for them? I use them all the time and I said, yes, so that'll be out on the Picker channel maybe in a few weeks. 
And you know, every single time you're actually out doing your job, you know, if I'm a, if I'm in Georgia for a highway sale, you better believe I'm writing off that food too. And of course, when I'm out with all them boys that make me pay for everything, I gotta write them off too. So, rock and roll. I shouldn't say that. Actually, I should. <laughs> rock and roll jeans, thirty thirty four. These were pretty good little sellers, thirty four ninety five plus shipping by the way i hear people all the time you know always ship in the in the postal flat rate padded for these and that just isn't the case anymore it's definitely a poly bag for me to ship these out because grand advantage is just cheaper even than that flat rate stuff for sure and some people might say well just for convenience or you don't have to buy the poly bag or whatever well I'll buy the poly bag for darn sure if it's going to save me a buck fifty. And you know, there might still be cases, I don't want to say that, that you do that padded poly. Actually, you can fit it in a, in a flat rate poly too, but that's beside the point. And there's more stuff. I mean, every single box in here, well, unless it's a priority box, every single poly bag, every single roll of tape, my go-to tape, Co Commonwealth, Every tape gun, every pair of scissors, every Sharpie marker I have, all that stuff goes through that business account because it is a business expense. And a lot of you I know don't do that, and I highly, highly encourage you, I've said this before, get a business account, even if you're not a business account, just get a separate account. This isn't talking about LLCs and S-Corps and all that. That's not necessarily for a lot of people. But what is necessary is to keep your business side separated from your actual income and your your household stuff so that you can keep track of this stuff way way easier and yeah you know printers if you're getting rollo link down below or or if you're getting a cheaper one or if you're you know any of this stuff all this stuff cards every single little bit really should be taken off and there's some bigger questions you know you see the lights on right here i know a lot of people do electric bills and they you know portion off this much of their house's home office and all that well i'm just wandering around here brooks shoes y'all i bought a pair of shoes that were good the other day which is rare for me <laughs> and i try not to i've told myself this year 50 dollars and above i don't want to pick them up and i've already broken that rule a little bit but these look at these guys i don't even remember what i paid i was so excited to see a pair that i thought would sell these brooks shoes right here I don't even know what I paid. Like I said, maybe 15, 20 bucks. I saw that $80 price tag on it. I'm like, okay, and it is brand new. And guess what it sold for? It sold for $75 plus shipping and quickly. So, you know, to educate yourself is, is very, very well worth it. And there's better voices out there than me, but I figured I would go through some of this stuff too. And I'm not comfortable with a lot of it. Like, I don't know to tell, I don't know the ramifications of you know, sectioning off your house and counting the square footage and deducting this part of your electric bill. And I don't even know. I know that I do some little things. I, th I think they're right from what I've heard and from what I've asked people that know, like any kind of type of memberships or, you know, there's folks who do even memberships in YouTube channels. You know, I know our RIN has one over there. People are members over there and you can write that off. There's all kinds of stuff like that. People, you know, that went to the reseller rally, for instance, the cost of that, you know, all the professional stuff that I used to do as a teacher, they would uh, highly encourage you to have that stuff as write-offs and all that, continuing education, all that stuff can be written off. I know this building right here is a depreciable asset. I think that's the right term. Again, not an accountant. And so that portion of it that depreciates every year gets deducted, not the whole amount for something like this. And there's different rules to that. You know, if it's something that is permanent, you know, you put footings in and all that stuff, it adds value to the house. So there's different rules for that stuff. But I would highly encourage people to explore those things. I know we've got a trailer out there. You know, anything. If I buy something like that shelf at a garage sale, you better believe that's coming off because that's something I'm using to do in here that tv is coming off for sure you know when you get those nice sales you want to keep as much of that profit as you can well, obviously i mean that's what we're doing this for right not just fun i wouldn't be if this was fun and i was losing money guess what it probably wouldn't be fun alpine ski bindings right here they sold for really good money i think right around 160 dollars plus shipping you know, another one that people don't think about much, and I didn't either really until I started doing YouTube because we try to give back quite a bit of, of what we've been incredibly blessed with, to, to put it lightly. And so we occasionally do stuff like that. We sponsor 
Isaiah House Events. We sponsored their golf tournament last year. And, you know, that's advertising. So that comes out of that account. That gets written off. All the charity stuff we keep track of, which is why I was able to give you those numbers last time. And that's not the personal stuff. That goes on the personal tax return. But the stuff that you give us that we give through the business, all that stuff comes off the bottom line as well. And, you know, most people do some kind of advertising if they're in this thing long term. I mean, even things like cards or stickers or whatever should come off an advertising budget of some sort and come out of that account. And there's a write off there. By the way, that's not to fall into the trap of saying, you know, you should do all these things so your tax bill is lower because you're only getting a percentage of what you're spending off as a as a write off. You know, you're just not paying tax on on what would that have been. You know, it's not like you get the whole thing back by any stretch. This was a Mercari sale, actually. 16 bucks, I think, is what it sold for, plus shipping. Shout out, list perfectly, code Commonwealth, 30% off. I think we have another cross-listing sale here in just a second, too. But, you know, I know a lot of people who don't do this full-time. They just do it casually. And they do all these things, and they do it right, and they separate the accounts and all that. And then they can have very, very manageable tax liability. I even know some people who do it very sparingly who have no tax liability whatsoever. And that always gets to the question. I'm sure somebody will ask it here. What do you do with personal items? So that's touchy. I don't want to get into it too much, but I will just give you my opinion on it. If it's a personal item and you have a record of what you paid for that personal item and you sold it for less, then you shouldn't be paying taxes on that. And some people will say, well, there's you know, depreciation with use. So you got to take that on all into account and whatever. And I'm like, well, I don't think people do that with homes, right? A home is used, but you know, you're going to pay capital gains tax on what you gain on it. And if you lost, you're not going to pay taxes on what you lost. So why should we be paying taxes on something we've already paid full price for and paid, you know, and, and had that depreciation and lost that value. That makes no sense to me, but that's something you can talk to somebody about, maybe other than me. That's a perfect segue into this item right here. This is Turner's old bat, and I've gotten way better about keeping track of old items that my kids have that I know eventually we will resell, that he will eventually grow out of. And I don't remember exactly what we paid for this guy right here, but this Marucci bat used, and I don't think we bought this one used. A lot of times I buy used bats for Turner because I'm cheap, but this time I think he got this one new for probably Christmas last year, two years ago, something like that. $45, $44.95 plus shipping. The key, of course, is to keep good records. And you know there's a My Reseller Genie ad in here somewhere. I guess I'll, I'll wait on it, but code Commonwealth 15% off. Or you're going to get in trouble, right? So, not necessarily with the policeman, though. And I want to be a policeman. Carla Green. And this is from the 1950s, I think. And it is in great shape. So, that one sold for 15 bucks, $14.95 plus shipping. I was at an amazing sale that you'll see on the Commonwealth Picker channel soon. Which, by the way, I would appreciate it greatly. I, just, I talked about how blessed we are. This channel has grown like crazy over the last few months. So thank you and welcome to all you new folks. Right now, the Picker channel is growing like crazy. And this one has gone down to normal levels. But for all the all you new folks, I would appreciate it greatly if you take a minute and subscribe to this channel and hit that alert bell. That would be awesome. You know, it was in my wildest dreams that I ever think we would have 100,000 subs on the Picker channel. And we do, and we got one of those play buttons, which is kind of crazy for an old history teacher from Virginia, by way of California. But Turner keeps asking me, do you think you'll ever get there on this channel? So he wants to do promos and stuff, which I let him do a couple. But I'm like, I don't know. I never thought we would. But at this point, I think it's possible, which is an amazing, amazing thing. And we appreciate all of you. I guess I should talk about what's sold. So I was at this sale, and this guy was like a prepper of some sort. I wonder if he pays all his taxes. And he just had tons of stuff. And it was so cheap. I literally just made a giant pile and came home and figured it all out. <laughs> and so some of them are winners. Some of them are losers. This is a Winchester shotgun shell bag. New-ish. And it wasn't huge value. But it was definitely worth throwing in the pile. $15.15 plus shipping. Which is a little weird number. Which means somebody probably used their 5% off. And I checked it. And it is a viewer, Chad. Chad, thank you. He says, thanks, like watching your videos. Chad, I appreciate that greatly. Hope you enjoy the bag. So another one of those golf range finders back here. And I'm sure there's, you know, 
a lot of folks think, you know, rich people avoid taxes and whatever, you know. Maybe, maybe, I'm sure they do. You know, they probably didn't get rich by giving all their money away. And it just reminds me selling a golf item. You know, right now, golf meetings or something like that. But, hey, who knows? Go, go, go. I don't do that, but I suppose it's... I don't know. I don't want to get into that. Go, go, go. Sport V Pro. This is a low-end range finder. $18.95 plus shipping. But there is something to be said for using the laws that are on the books to effectively reduce your tax liability. It's becoming more and more important. You know, we've done videos in the past. Of course, you know, it was the $20,000 limit or however many items before they'd report to the IRS on a 1099, all that stuff. And then, of course, the big scare of $600, which really pinches those newbies for darn sure. And I've warned about that for a while. It looks like people are talking about 5,000 for 2024. And I've said this before, and I'll say it one more time. You know, the lower that number goes, really the better it is for people who have all these things in place because it's gonna squeeze out people who want to casually resell. I think it's terrible, I don't like the idea, but that's the facts of the matter. You know, people complain about, now there's so many resellers and whatever, that thing would knock quite a few out. And I don't want that to be the case, but it is true for, for those of you out there who take this seriously and treat it like a business while having fun. And I heard a quote the other day, about get two jobs as opposed to got two jobs and i am fortunate to have a get two job this is the last one of these i think i have one more that has a different kind as the third down there we made a bunch of money on these paid 50 cents a piece there were so many of them we're doing free shipping on them 25.95 but you know even at free shipping for something like that paying a buck 50 you're still making a pretty good profit and we did it like 20 times so there was a whole ton of them in that box loved that sale sad to see them go i guess we still got those back there haven't sold a plush in a while 17.95 this is from over the hedge it is a squirrel here hammy plush and that was a pretty good little movie if i recall it's been many moons i watched that with bubble when he was a kid not even turner and reagan and now i see why that got bought so this is set up to josh he says, love your channels. My wife, my daughters, and myself have been inspired to start our own YouTube channel for reselling squirrely resale. Thanks for the content. So I have, a, I don't normally do this with people with, you know, I shout out folks, but here you go. Squirrely resale right there. And just, it's the family thing that always gets me. Thanks. Pick these up in Georgia, not really knowing if they're worth anything or not, but Cabbage Patch clothes i'm like yeah if they're not worth anything i'll send them to the daily cabbage over on instagram but sorry you missed out sarah because paid a quarter a piece and they sell for they sold for 20 plus shipping so i sold and we sold an in a man and as you can see we are out where you're pulling from decorations right now i think we have one on auction right now with a titleist hat for charity that helos world gave us but we're selling one from our little decoration up there and of course it went to a viewer hope in hopes of getting their ebay store moving and you don't have to hope you know this has proven 99.8 percent of the time it is very effective scientifically proven right it is a plush enema after all <laughs> gets things moving as usual i always enjoy watching your channels i have come to the conclusion that i must be a must be warped in some way due to the fact that i've become so addicted to the trash to cash podcast yeah that's probably true if you watch that you got problems for sure <laughs> as well as the picker and the flipper channels lol god bless you and yours ps kevin would you please sign my in a man shirt and i like to do it pretty quick so i don't forget so when i sign it on the back but jill we appreciate you and we appreciate you flattering me and giving me a big head for asking me to sign something we usually do that over on on whatnot if people ask so i appreciate it very much and he is headed your way and i hope he gets things moving for you. Down to the nitty gritty on the WCW NWO, the, the generic one, school caps. Some of you are like, good, I'm tired of hearing about it. <laughs> it's like every show, right? Just have a few of these left right here. And that is all she wrote on them. And NWO school cap right there. And these were going for 10 bucks, but I accidentally put them on clearance again. So this one went for seven. All right, y'all, no Commonwealth comedy. We're flipping back and forth lately because I'm trying to indoctrinate my kid with all my nerdy history stuff. 
So we've got a, a proverb. This is an old Mongolian proverb right here. You read it. Tell me what you think. Do not scorn a weak cub. He may become the brutal tiger. Do not scorn a weak cub. He may become a brutal tiger. What do you think that means? I used to tell it to my, well, you know what baseball teams are like, right? So I used to tell it to my older kids, my juniors, my seniors, the kids on varsity. So, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, wait. Go it ahead. means like, don't like make fun of someone. They might. Yeah, someday they might be bigger and better than you or might be able to beat you up. You're right. A little cub might turn into a tiger someday. And then you picked on that cub when he was a cub and now he's going to come and eat you, right? So it's the same kind of idea right there. So, you, well, you should be nice to anybody for any reason, but it's just a cool little thing. I used to use that to teach my older kids how to how to treat the younger kids. Because, you know, because I can tell you a story and bore the audience for a minute. When I was on my varsity baseball team, I was a senior, and we were really good. And I was really good, if I can be honest with you. And we won two state championships the year before, and there was this young kid, this freshman, who would come up and practice for the varsity sometimes. And he'd get picked on by the younger kids because he was special. And he'd get picked on by the older kids because he was the freshman. And that kid, I remember him. I was like, man, this kid's a pretty good ball player. That kid ended up being a big leaguer for six years. What do you think of that? That's crazy. So I was glad I was nice to him then because, you know, I could call him up later. <laughs> anyway, thank you, buddy. Bye. We go from plush enemas to Bibles. This is an English Standard Version, leather bound, modern, definitely not old. So I knew it wouldn't have great value, but you know, you pick these things up for a buck and they usually sell $14.95 plus shipping. You know when I love cross-listing the most is when I sell a pair of shoes because I love to get rid of shoes. <laughs> I've been doing a lot better not picking them up, but I think these were also turners. And for some reason, he didn't wear them bad enough that we couldn't sell them, which usually happens. And this is a pair of Nike Revolution shoes, and they sold for $15.85 plus shipping. Shout out with perfectly. And I guess if you've hung around this long, I'm going to do a My Reseller Genie giveaway since this was about taxes today. So we're going to give one away. By the way, I had people criticizing, well, I was listening to a live show the other day, which I do when I'm shipping in here. And people were talking about me and they're like, you know, you know, he doesn't pay for that bubble wrap and you know, he doesn't pay for that tape. Well, listen, I actually do pay for the bubble wrap. Joel, I'd take free bubble wrap, but usually what happens is I ask those folks, if they're going to give me something free, I'd like to give it away. And so we do that occasionally with the tape on whatnot. And we gave away a year's supply of bubble wrap. And we've done that multiple times. Last year, we gave away tons of bubble wrap. Joel, if you're listening, I'm sure the folks out there would like some. But I uh, also heard somebody say that they tried Commonwealth, Code Commonwealth, for the bubble wrap and there is no five percent discount that's true it's all the other products you know tape stuff like that but bubble wrap there's there's no discount i'd appreciate if you use my link though because i get a little kickback so two bucks i'll take it <laughs> but i don't know what i was talking about oh my reseller genie put my reseller genie down in the comments below and i'll send you this one it's got a unique qr code on the back we'll give you one month free if you want to give it a shot and look if you don't want to give this a shot do something but they are amazing folks and the product is great and the onboarding now is way easier than it used to be and so much of it is automated once you set it up you know we didn't even talk about the expenses that are already calculated into what you're doing all the ebay stuff and all that stuff they give you reports but all of it goes in one place especially if you're cross-listing like we are we're selling on one, two, three, four, like six different places at this point i think that's right so it makes our life a lot easier to do it that way. But if you win, I'll announce this couple videos from now. So just put uh, I Dream of Genie" in the comments. I'll announce a winner a few videos from now. And they can send me an email and I'll send it off to them. So if you do want to give it a shot, of course, use the link. There's always a link in the description. If you can't find our links, they're always over on CommonwealthPicker.com. Scroll to Affiliates and all the places where you can get a discount is over there. We appreciate people using those. You know, I've been meaning to do this for a while and I keep forgetting, so I'm gonna do it. And I don't even know the exact date, but I think it's like May 1st, somewhere around there. We're gonna be selling over on knickknacks.net. And that's Jocelyn Crazy Lamp Lady site. And I'm no glass expert. This stuff's all listed on eBay, by the way. Which is why I called my buddy down, Tim, over the years, which reminds me of one more tax thing here. 
you know when i ever ask people to come and do it i don't want to inconvenience them i don't want it to be a cost for them and so lodging when you're away but even when i have people in i make sure that all of that stuff is right offable if you will matter of fact i even had a, a person tell me a couple things they're like you know you really should use your kids in a tax write-off and whatever and i you're probably right and i don't do that and i don't do it for personal reasons but there's i'm sure if you talk to folks and your kids work for you and you know you can probably write off i don't know all the details of that i personally don't do that but maybe i should but one thing i do is make sure if i'm renting an airbnb for somebody or putting somebody up in a hotel that's part of my business i make sure that stuff's all written off for darn sure and i've even had people tell me you know you should pay yourself and i don't do this but maybe i should so i don't know the details and i like to have peace of mind i guess and not do things that i'm not sure about maybe when i'm sure about it i will but people have told me, hey, if you run whatnot shows from your kitchen table, you ought to rent that from yourself. And I don't know, maybe that's the case, but I don't really know. So, but anyway, I said all this just to say we are going to be selling glass. I have a whole shed full of glass over there on knickknacks. A lot of great stuff. I don't know anything. Well, I know more this year than I knew last year. I knew more last year than I did the year before. And Tim over the years has been a big help in that. And he's going to come and sell with us and help us over there on knickknacks come and join us whenever that is i'll be posting it in the next few videos it should be a good time i'm starting everything in a buck and there's great stuff in there so it should be fun and you're gonna see all these clothes that have been airing out over here i hate selling stuff that has a scent to it and i'm doing the best i can they've been hanging up for a week but <laughs> when you do that that's on the district app by the way and of course we're over there on dibdid.com and i have the mulligan or mulligan's golf shop over there so come on and join those two and hang out with us and chat in there and buy things sell things it's a good time all right we got reagan and wallen here how you doing bud Is you're a little wet because it's raining out there hi how you doing and she's got a sale out of come off figure.com look at this we haven't sold one of these in a while chris got a cwp mod Thank you, Chris. Appreciate it, y'all. We have, I always keep some for decoration, but this is all of those mugs we have left. And we've had about that many for a while because we have so one. <laughs> so anyway, thank you, Reagan. Bye, and don't forget to get your sticker at commonwealthpicker.com. Anyway, I've talked enough. Sun finally came out and Turner has practice, so I got to get my butt going here. And we appreciate you stopping by as always, and I can't wait to see you next time. Mm -hmm.